This is going to be verse by verse of the book of Galatians, starting in chapter 1. In chapter 1, the Apostle Paul is explaining to the Galatians that he has some credibility. He's not a part of the satanic puppet show going on. Back then, nothing like the sellouts of our day. He is no Stephen Furtick, Rob Bell, Rick Warren, Beth Moore, or Kenneth Copeland. Those are Satan's preachers who spread a false gospel today. Those are just a few of your false gospel puppets. A, a part of the false gospel puppet show that you see going on today. It's ridiculous. It's just a money-making racket going on. All in the name of Jesus Christ. In verse 1, Paul explains to you why that just is not who he is. In Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. So you have God called apostles, and then there were apostles of men and by man. These were the false apostles. And Paul talks about them in 2 Corinthians 11.13-15, through 15, where he says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, just like they're doing on TV today. I remember as a lost person thinking that Creflo Dollar was just a true saint on his way to heaven, and I, I wished that I knew I was going to heaven. I remember thinking that. I remember thinking the Pope was going to heaven. Because these people have transformed themselves into the apostles of Christ. They get lost people thinking that they are the real deal. But Paul says, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Don't be fooled by the false gospel puppets who make you think they're all cute and innocent and sweet and godly. If you're in the book, that is the King James Bible, then you can easily spot the false apostle. For example, the church of Ephesus, you know, in the book of Revelation, were commended for being able to recognize and to try these false apostles. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2, the Lord says, Thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. If you're consistently learning the words of God, then you'll know a false gospel and a false preacher when you see him. Hebrews 5, 13 and 14, For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. If you've got a hold of the word, got into some strong meat, you're going to be able to discern some things. The meat of the word will cause you to grow. You'll be able to distinguish between who is on your side and who is on the devil's side. And like I said, when I was a lost person, I thought Joyce Meyer and all of these uh, crazy people like that and the Pope were godly. Many times Christians are deceived themselves by these false teachers because they themselves haven't read the Bible any more than I had as a lost person. Now Galatians 1.1, Paul an apostle. Not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Paul was not appointed by man, but by Jesus Christ himself. He was a God-called apostle. And there are no apostles today. You know, a lot of times you'll see uh, people making a lot of money claiming to be an apostle and going around to churches and taking up big offerings and claiming to do miracles and signs and wonders. But the re real requirements for apostleship is in Acts chapter 1, 21 through 22. And they don't meet these requirements. In Acts 1, 21, it says, Wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. So, I mean, you didn't live back then. You're not an apostle. 
It says, beginning from the baptism of John into the same day that he was taken up from us, talking about the Lord Jesus, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Were you a witness of his resurrection? Paul was a lost man when Jesus walked the earth. So he's a little bit different than the other apostles. However, he's still an apostle because the Lord himself appointed him. Uh, men today were not accompanied. Where they weren't around with these men back then. They weren't around during the baptism of John. And they weren't around when the Lord was resurrected. Paul was alive during all of these events. And Paul was called of God to be an apostle. Those claiming to be apostles are liars today. When you think of apostle, think of the word postal. An apostle gives you the mail. He is a messenger of the good news of Jesus Christ. If you claim to be an apostle in that sense then that's all right, but don't claim you have the signs of an apostle like they had in the book of Acts. And I just wouldn't go around calling yourself apostle, whatever your name is. I wouldn't do that because it's the Pharisees that like those big titles. Notice in verse 1, Paul believed in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, And God the Father who raised him from the dead. He was a witness of the resurrected Lord Jesus in Acts chapter 9 on the road to Damascus when he got saved. He witnessed the, resurrect, the resurrected Savior. Any preacher who denies the resurrection is a false gospel apostle. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is part of the gospel according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So who are these false gospel puppets? Who's a part of that? false gospel puppet show it's satan's apostles but it isn't always them sometimes it's smooth brethren in galatians 1 1 through 2 it says paul an apostle not of men neither by man but by jesus christ and god the father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of galatia so paul had some brethren with him he said and all the brethren which are with me However, it was never the smooth brethren. Paul has friends, but they weren't frenemies, as they call them. Paul wasn't a lone ranger, but he was hanging with the right crowd. Be on the guard for smooth brethren. They can be just as bad as Satan's apostles, because they can spread a false gospel, and they try to flatter you. In Psalm fifty-five twenty-one, it says, The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Just because somebody's saying good things doesn't mean they have good intentions. Proverbs 5, 3 through 4, For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Many times your fellow Christians will be deceived and spread a false gospel. There are good churches with some bad apples. They get people alone and then give them bad doctrine. And many times this causes a church to maybe even split apart. But Paul had some brethren with him. However, he was very careful who he hung around. In Romans sixteen seventeen, he says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So he teaches there's some people you need to stay away from and avoid. That would be the Satan, sat satanic apostles and the smooth brethren. Second Thessalonians 3.14, And if any, any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So note that man, have no company with him. The false gospel can spread through Satan's apostles. Sometimes it can be spread on the inside through smooth brethren. And Paul goes on to say in verse 3 of Galatians chapter 1, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now Paul wouldn't want to be around smooth talking brethren that deny things like the Godhead. You see it here in Galatians even. The verse said, this grace and peace comes from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. So right there you have two persons of the Godhead. And you have the third one in Galatians chapter 5, which also mentions peace. 
See, you see, a fruit of the Spirit is peace. So there in verse 3, you've got all three. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace comes from the Holy Spirit of God. So all three take part in the peace of the saints. Galatians 5.22 says it. But the fruit of the Spirit, there is the Holy Spirit, is love, joy, and peace. And a smooth-talking brethren would deny the Godhead. Paul knew what John knew in 1 John 5, 7, which says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, that's the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. One God, one and three, three and one. You can't explain it, but you better not deny it. Now, Galatians 1, 1 through 3. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me, and to the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a daily growth in grace. God's grace already came to you in the form of salvation. Now you need a daily grace. Every day of your Christian life. This comes through prayer and Bible reading. Second Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So the way you're going to grow in grace is to get knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through reading the Bible, through praying, getting close to Him. The more knowledge you get about God, the more you grow in grace. The peace in Galatians 1.3 is the peace of God. You already got peace with God as salvation. You see, there's a difference between the peace of God and peace with God. The, you got peace with God the moment that you got saved. The peace of God is something you need every day because sometimes you can lose that peace as a Christian. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. So you need a daily growth of grace, and you need daily the peace of God. So, back to the topic here. So Satan's preachers... Satan's apostles, the smooth brethren, are, are a part of the false gospel puppets, and they throw a false gospel at you. So it's not just them, but it's also number three, the sinful world. Galatians 1, 4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. If this was written almost 2,000 years ago, and Paul called the world evil back then. What would he call it today? This sinful world's false gospel is simply to love everything and to love everybody. And in their mind, if you do these things, then you're going to heaven. And that's a false gospel. In their eyes, you're supposed to love homosexuality. You're supposed to stand up for it and make sure all the homosexuals have rights that you don't even have. They don't want, they just don't want their own rights they want to have more rights than you've got they love abortion and they call it women's rights it's a sick sick world you're living in when little nas x the rapper can have such a satanic video that he just came out with this country is headed for hell as fast as it can go it's for some very sick, satanic stuff that kids are watching. Their parents are letting them watch it. And the parents are probably liking it and listening to it in the car, on the way to work, on the way to pick their kids up from school. Just listening to filth all throughout the day. Putting that filth in the minds of their kids. And what are those kids going to grow up being? I mean, this place in 20 years, it's going to be a straight, just garbage dump of sin. I mean, it already is. But it's not going to be safe to walk down the street. Jesus gave himself for our sins. He willingly laid down his life for us, the verse says, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. And he said in John ten eleven, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He gave himself for us. 
the sinful world's false gospel, though, would love to leave out the for our sins part of the gospel. And it's mentioned again in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, where it says, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Uh, these people in this sinful world today, putting out this false gospel, don't want to admit that they're a sinner. They don't want to tell anyone that they are a sinner because they would be offended by it. However, you can't mention the gospel without mentioning the word sins. According to 1 Corinthians 15.3, he died for our sins. Very clear. Notice how Paul clearly mentions, he clearly mentions it over and over again, the purpose Jesus had to die in the first place. Galatians 1, 4, and 5, Who gave himself for our, for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So it was the will of God and our Father for Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins, to whom be glory forever and ever. And that isn't what this sinful world wants. They want God out. They want the glory of man. They don't want God getting the glory forever and ever. You look at the Super Bowl halftime show. Look at the award shows. They want the glory in each other. God puts a damper on glorying in each other. He puts a damper on their sinful lifestyle. Knowing that there is a God up in heaven who is watching everything you do is an idea they absolutely hate. They would rather give man the glory Romans 1, 22 through 23 says, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, into birds, into four-footed beasts, and creeping things. They hold up that Grammy or Oscar or whatever it is, the little golden statue of a man, and that's their glory. They give glory to man. They don't want God to get any praise. They especially don't want him to get it forever and ever. They would never say amen to that. But Paul says, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. They would rather try to bring in a false kingdom of false peace and live in sin. Galatians 1, six. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. Paul is amazed that these false gospel puppets have led the Galatians astray so quick. They were so soon removed. He plainly gave them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and they received it. This proves beyond any shadow of a doubt that a Christian can be saved and deceived. And there are millions of people who got saved because they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and then a false brethren, a false gospel puppet led them astray to the point that they now themselves add works to the simple gospel. I say all this because you have a lot of pus, uh, puffed up pastors going around calling everyone lost who doesn't believe exactly like them or who doesn't believe in eternal security. Now, I believe in eternal security 100%. But just because someone doesn't believe once saved, always saved, this fact doesn't make them lost. They could have believed on Jesus Christ and believed they were saved by grace through faith the day they got saved, and then they got led astray and were led into this false doctrine by false teachers. This is what happened to the Galatians. And these same people could be spreading a false gospel themselves. They started out saved, they started out right, were led astray, ended up teaching something wrong themselves. There are men going around saying that Everyone who doesn't believe in eternal security is lost. I mean, some of the greatest people in church history didn't believe in eternal security like we do. While the, the eternal security deniers may be adding works after salvation, it doesn't mean they were trusting in works when they believed the gospel to start with. And that's what it's about. Was there ever a moment when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and not your works? If you did, then you're saved. But people can be led, led astray after they genuinely get saved. In Galatians 5, the same book we're studying, Galatians chapter 5, lists heresies as a work of the flesh. And believing that you can lose your salvation is a heresy. And that's a work of the flesh. A heresy is an error in what someone teaches. 
Christians can be deceived and teach a heresy. And Christians still, still sin by committing the works of the flesh. But Galatians 1, six says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. Paul is just amazed how anyone could stray from the simplicity of the gospel. He calls it the simplicity that is in Christ in 2 Corinthians 11.3. And he says in verse 7, he's, or verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. The Bible talks about another gospel here. It also mentions another Jesus. 2 Corinthians 11, 4 says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So the unclean spirits know Jesus, according to the Bible. In Acts 19, 15, an evil spirit says, Jesus, I know and Paul I know. They know who the right Jesus is and who the right uh, preacher is. And this is why unclean spirits or even fallen angels can come along with a false gospel themselves. They can show you another gospel. They can show you another Jesus. And they are nothing but another group of these false gospel puppets. So we've had satanic apostles, smooth brethren, the sinful world. And now we're going to see seducing spirits, devils, and fallen angels are part of that false gospel puppet show. Galatians 1, 8 through 9, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, If any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be accursed. There are currently angels in hell. Jude 6 says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habit habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Although the angels that sinned back in Noah's time are in hell, this doesn't mean angels don't still currently fall. Therefore, they are currently on the loose, influencing people for the devil, along with unclean spirits. Galatians 1.8 says, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Once the angel preaches a false gospel to you, he's no longer from heaven. He's checked out he's leave, left his first estate but paul repeats himself and says as we said before so say i now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received let him be accursed so the gospel is something you receive it's more than just knowing facts you receive it you put your trust in it to save you but a man who preaches a false gospel is accursed. He's on his way to hell. The only way he wouldn't be is if he's like the Galatians himself. The Galatians have been bewitched, according to Galatians 1.3. Someone has tricked them into believing works are required to stay saved. And there are millions of people just like them. As I said before, if they believed on Jesus Christ sometime in their life, they're saved. Even though they're currently teaching a heresy. If a man is preaching and trusting in a false gospel to save him, and there was never a time when he came to believe on Jesus Christ alone without works, then he is lost. But if he believed on Jesus Christ sometime in the past and placed his faith on Jesus alone and later preached a false gospel, he would be saved but yet deceived. But the Galatians believed the gospel Paul preached to them at first. And a trickster came in and deceived them. This caused them to believe works played a part in keeping their salvation. They were saved and yet deceived. The same thing happens to preachers. There are men who truly get saved by believing on Jesus Christ. Then a false preacher comes in and he deceives them. This causes them to start preaching a false gospel themselves. Yet they were saved. They are saved and taught wrong. There's a big difference between someone who's truly saved and yet taught wrong and someone else who never believed and is a false convert and creating other false converts through a false gospel. Examples of this would be men like Joseph Smith and the Mormons because supposedly an angel, supposedly an angel from heaven gave him a gospel, gave him some messages, gave him some revelations. 
that were supposedly from God, but it turns out to be a false gospel. That's what Paul warns against in Galatians 1, 8 through 9. The angel or seducing spirit pretending to be an angel of light is accursed, according to Paul in Galatians 1, 8 through 9. So you have these spiritual enemies. Ephesians 6 calls them spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, I believe there's differences in these these spirits, you know, you've got fallen angels, you've got, the Bible talks about devils, it calls them unclean spirits, and these are just, these are spirits, the angels are spirits that, are, and they can fall from heaven, and they seduce men with false gospels, and there are men who are full of these seducing spirits, they're going around making people twofold more the child of hell than themselves, like the Pharisees in Matthew twenty three fifteen, they are flesh and blood false teachers who are led by spiritual wickedness in high places, the ones that's talked about in Ephesians 6. But Paul goes on to say in Galatians 1, 10, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So the true gospel that Paul preaches doesn't please, please men, even though it's simple. It is hard for people to believe that we are saved by grace through faith without works. It's even harder for them to believe that we are kept by grace through faith without works. This is because man is prideful. He wants to think he's good enough to have a part in his own salvation. Paul's gospel is simple, but yet it's completely negative. He teaches man is sinful. He teaches we didn't deserve heaven when we got saved. He teaches we can't do anything good enough to deserve heaven to stay saved. According to him, it is Jesus Christ plus nothing. And man does not like that because it makes him look like a wretch. And that's exactly what man is. If Paul wanted to please men, then he would, he would say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be circumcised to be saved because that's what they were saying back then. You had to be circumcised and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Or if he was here today, he would say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, live right, and be water baptized. That's what they're saying today. Instead of being circumcised today, it's baptized. You've got to be baptized to be saved is what they'll say. But we know by reading Paul's epistles that water baptism does not save. And Paul even said himself in 1 Corinthians 1, I came not to baptize but to preach the gospel, showing you that water baptism is not even part of the gospel. But this false gospel pleases Satan's preachers because it helps them keep the people in bondage. That false gospel pleases men because it makes them feel better about themselves. That false gospel makes you please the seducing spirits because it sends people to hell where they're going. Now, the next false gospel puppet is a slave to religion. Many religious people are zealous and lost. They would die for their faith, but they have the wrong faith. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Church of Christ, Charismatics, and others are many times more zealous than Christians. But they are believing a false gospel and they're on their way to hell. Paul was one of those slaves to religion. However, the Lord appeared to him and gave him the true gospel. He says in Galatians 1.11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. You see, Paul says, I certify you. His letters are certified documents. The gospel Paul had was not given to him by a sinful man. It was given to him by Jesus Christ. In verse 12, he says, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul didn't receive it from a man or from the angel Moroni. He received it from Jesus Christ himself. He was a zealous Pharisee before he was saved. He was torturing Christians ignorantly in unbelief. As he says in 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 13, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He, he explains it here in this chapter. He says in Galatians 1.13, For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. You see, he was a slave to religion. 
And he said, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. So his conversation is more than just how he talked. It also covers how he walked, his manner of life. In time past in the Jews' religion, he persecuted the church of God. Before he was a Christian, he hated Christians. Religious people hate Bible-believing Christians because Bible-believing Christians are not supposed to have as many standards as the religious person, but they actually have more standards. But he persecuted the church of God. And this shows you that the church of God, which is the body of Christ, according to Paul himself, it shows you that the church of God was here before Paul got saved, proving that the body of Christ did not start with Paul as many people teach. If Paul was persecuting the church of God, which is the body of Christ, before he was saved, then how could the body start with Paul? You see what I mean? But in Acts 9, 4 through 5, you're going to see where he met the Lord Jesus, the resurrected Savior. And it says, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. That's what the Bible calls Paul before he got saved was Saul. And it says, Why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Who art thou Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Paul persecuted the church of God and wasted it. He did this beyond measure. And this is what happened to him after he was saved. He faced troubles beyond measure. In 2 Corinthians 1 8, he says, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. So he went from being a slave to religion who oppressed the Christians beyond measure to being pressed out of measure himself. Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. In Philippians 3, 5 through 7, he gives uh, the, his life story. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Paul thought he was pleasing God. He thought he was doing God's service. And Paul really believed what he preached when, when he was a Pharisee. And there are many Muslims who really believe what they're doing. But there's Muslims who don't practice what they believe. When a Muslim practices what he professes to believe, then he kills Christians and Jews. Paul was a religious person that really believed what he taught. Now Galatians 1.14 and, and it says, And he profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Paul says he profited in the Jews' religion. However, Jesus says in Mark 8, 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What would it prof have profited Paul if he became the most popular Pharisee of all time? He would have lost his own soul in the process. Paul was so zealous, but zealous in the wrong thing. But after he got saved, he became zealous in the right thing. And he says in Galatians 4.18, But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. Paul was more exceedingly zealous. And this is why that when some religious people get saved, they turn out to be great Christians. They were zealously on fire for the wrong gospel, and now they are zealously affected in a good thing. But Paul says he was exceeding zealous in the traditions of, of his fathers. Tradition can be a bad thing. Jesus said in Matthew fifteen three, but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? The traditions you do that you think are good many times can go against the commandment of God. But Paul lays out new traditions for the church. He recommends that we keep these traditions. So there is good traditions if they're based on the Bible. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, it says, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. However, tradition that goes against the Bible should be avoided. Uh, for example, in Colossians 2.8, if you look at Colossians 2.8, it 
It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So you can be spoiled through bad tradition. You're going to see that even though Paul lived the life of a self-righteous and wicked Pharisee, it still pleased God for him to be born. It pleases God when a child's born. It pleases him. When abortions take place, it takes away from the pleasure of God. It goes far beyond just being murder. I mean, you're, you're stopping something from being born that God had a plan for. You're stopping from something from being born that, that God took pleasure in it being born. You want to get in the way of God's pleasure, then you're going to face some consequences for that. Paul says in Galatians 1, 15 through 16, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So it pleased God for Paul to be born. God is not for baby killing. God is not for abortion. Abortion, In any case, God does not consider it a woman's right to kill their baby. God had a purpose for Paul and knew that he would do it all along. He called Paul to be the one he revealed the gospel to. He called Paul to be the apostle to the heathen. The heathen are the Gentiles. And when uh, Paul was called, he conferred not with flesh and blood, as it says. And he's saying all this to explain to the Galatians that he got his revelations straight from God himself and not from other men. So he says in verse 17, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. He didn't get his revelations from any of the apostles which were before him. He, he was in Arabia. That's where Mount Sinai is. That's where Moses got the Ten Commandments. That's where Moses got the, the doctrine for Judaism. And, and um, God gives Paul the revelations for the church in Arabia. Galatians 1.18, he says, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. While he was with Peter, he could have heard stories about the Lord's earthly ministry and things like that. However, the revelations Paul gives us weren't from Peter. Galatians 1.19, But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. So James could have explained to Paul what it was like growing up with God manifested in the flesh as his brother. However, the revelations that Paul got were not from James either. And this James, the Lord's brother, this also proves that Mary had children after Jesus. She was a virgin when she had Jesus. However, Mary and Joseph had children after Jesus. And I say this because many Catholics teach that Mary is still a virgin. But they are slaves to religion. And they have a false gospel which adds works they are also idol worshippers. Galatians 1.20 Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Paul is reassuring them that he's telling the truth about where he got his revelation from. Many people were afraid of Paul. He was a slave to religion who went around torturing Christians. And he says in verse 21, Afterwards I came into the regions of, of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face into the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. So Paul talked with so few Christians right after he was saved that he was unknown by face into the churches. So once again, he couldn't have gotten this revelation from there. It came from the Lord himself. In Galatians 1.23, But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. So they heard about a man named Saul who had a false gospel, who was a slave to religion. Now they heard he has switched sides and now preaches Jesus Christ to every creature. And in verse 24 it says, And they glorified God in me. That's what Paul says. Paul went from being a self-righteous slave to religion who was trying to make it to heaven on his own merit he went from that to being someone who didn't get the glory, but they glorified God in him. Can we look at our Christian life and say that God is the one getting the glory and not ourselves? But this has been the False Gospel Puppet Show. 
And that's what you're seeing today in Christianity. It's a complete fake puppet show. Satan's apostles, they're everywhere you look. The sinful world, smooth-talking brethren coming in and leading disciples away after themselves, seducing spirits. That's what you have today. But if you get familiar with the book, then you're going to be able to spot them from a mile away.